I started my political life when I was very, very young, when I was 12 uh, in 1960, as a little civil rights kid. And so I have always been interested in the black experience and I thought I knew a lot and I wasn't somebody who needed to be told that white supremacy existed, that white people had done bad things or that black people had done brave things, but the extent of it as I've be gotten more and more into the topic has been uh, horrifying and eye-opening. I went to Woolworths demonstrations in Pittsburgh and that was the first demonstrations that I remember going to. They were in support of the sit-ins at the Woolworths in the South. Um, so that was when I was 12 and I continued to support the civil rights movement to the extent that a very young person was able to do, which was to the extent that my parents would let me. Um, I can tell you they were not super enthusiastic about my desire to go to the March on Washington in 1963 when I was 15. I vividly remember Martin Luther King's speech in part because everybody knew that it was going to be the big speech of the day. It was the last speech of the day. They handed out pamphlets with the, the text of the speech. I should say that as a 15-year-old, I felt that the dream that Martin Luther King was describing was my dream too. Martin Luther King Jr. in my eyes was a super important um, but not sainted leader. The notion that political organization does not have to proceed on the basis of focus on one leader at the top, but rather that a focus on the many people who actually make a movement and in fact made the civil rights movement happen. I mean, that exaggeration of Martin Luther King Martin Luther King could not have done it without the armies of especially very young people, of women, of, of people who are unsung now, who really made the, made the movement happen. These are the people who went to jail in massive numbers. These are the people who were on demonstrations in massive numbers, and they shouldn't be forgotten. <laughs>